In this demonstration, we're going to insert an intentional error into our orchestration to see how you would handle errors. So what we're going to do is insert right here a shape, and there's a general shape called expression, and this is where you can basically manipulate variables and, and code uh, almost a C-sharp type language. So BizTalk is not technically C-sharp, but it's very similar to C-sharp. Um, I'll give you two examples here. So before we start dealing in the expression shape, usually we need some variables to work with. So if you click on the orchestration anywhere, and then go over here to orchestration view, in a prior demo we had added a message, and now in this demo we want to add a variable or two. So let's click here, new variable, and let's put here, sorry, variable name. Um, Again, I would suggest some kind of naming convention. I tend to start my variables with either v or var or something like that, or you can go with the, uh, the old type of vb6 naming convention where if this is a string, you might want to call it strgrid, something like that. So I'm going to create a global unique ID in this orchestration, <coughs> and it's going to be a string. And I want to have a number here. I'm just going to call this X and Y, and we'll make it integers. So in a regular C-sharp program, you can create a GUID. Also, you have the IntelliSense here. So I can type V. That's another reason I like to use V. Um, if you just come here and hit control space, see you're going to get everything, variables and uh, other messages and everything. So vgwid uh, equals, and to get a gwid you would call the, the .NET framework and say system.gwid.newgwid. There it is, newgwid. And you put parentheses, and then generally in regular C sharp you can convert that to a string. However, you notice here, it's kind of hard to see, there's a little squiggly red line under the dot and says this is illegal. And so this is my proof that this is not strictly a, a C-sharp syntax here. So if you know C-sharp, generally you'll try to code the way you've learned to code in C-sharp. But here, for instance, you see that this is just not allowed. So I don't know why, but anyway. So the way to get around it is... We're still going to be coding sort of a C sharp, but we're going to do system.convert.toString. And so the point is, you cannot always take your C sharp code and just paste it in here because of these little anomalies like this. A lot of times it'll work, a lot of times it won't. So there we've generated a new GUID and a string. And then I want to create a variable x equals, let's do uh, y equals 0, and then x equals y divided by y. So we're going to force a divide by zero situation here, which, of course, every language, that usually causes an exception. So we're going to save this. And we, would, we can also give our expression shape a name over here, like uh, force divide by zero. Now here's a case where you've noticed I typed in about 30 characters, and each shape can only has room for about 15 or 16 characters. So another trick that I use is I insert, insert a shape called group. And a group is just a, a bunch of uh, shapes. Just for instance, let me show you. I could also insert in here a receive, and I could insert another expression. And then the whole group can be collapsed by clicking on that little plus minus sign there. So that's one reason for a group. Another reason for a group, to me, is just for documentation. So here. I can take this long message and I can actually put it in the group and you can see there's a little bit more room in the group you have a few more characters there and here you could say get GUID and divide something like that so we're gonna go deploy this whole project again and we're gonna run it with this divide by zero error in the program and we're gonna see what happens now one thing that's really nice about BizTalk 2006 compared to BizTalk 2004 is that you can redeploy the same application or the same project solution over and over again and it automatically saves all your bindings for you. 
And BizTalk 2004, you had to like undeploy and unbind and redeploy and rebind, and it was quite a pain. So BizTalk 2006 made this considerably better and easier to do your deploys. So now we've done our deploy, and we want to test this. So we're going to go back to Total Commander, and we're going to go to the map in demo, and we're going to copy our complex file. Oops, before I do it, <coughs> every time you do a deploy, you need to restart your BizTalk host. Again, I forget this still after two or three years, four years of doing this, whatever. Um, so right here I do right-click restart. Otherwise, if you don't do this, it's going to run the old copy of the DLL of the orchestration that's in memory, and then you'll get the same results you got last time you ran the program. Okay, so now I'm going to copy the file. That's not it, this file. And this talk has picked it up when we go to hat. And waiting still. It's 125 on November 13th. And you notice the orchestration didn't start. So what I'm going to do is scroll over to the right here. And you see a message that says, well, it's like, to make it easier to read, it's easier to right click and go to message flow. It says the message engine failed to process the message. The published message could not be routed because no subscribers were found. So this is not what I was expecting to happen. So we have to go back and determine if the orchestration is still started and enlisted and everything. So we go here to orchestrations. The orchestration, I'm going to do a refresh. The orchestration is started. So we were looking at the receive. Let's look at the transmit and look at its message flow. And this is also kind of a residual leftover from a prior demo we did. We can see that there was some kind of error, and the error handler actually took over and wrote the message to PO error message ID. But the problem is when we do that, we really need to look at the context of the message to determine what the error was. And rather than going through all that trouble, what I want to do is turn off that error handling. So this was from many lessons ago. We set up a receipt port. And right here, we turned on enable routing for failed messages. So right now, we don't want to route failed messages. So we turn that off, and we simply drop the file again. There's also a chance I dropped the wrong file a few minutes ago. But without actually seeing the error message, it makes it hard to debug. So we're going to go back to hat and refresh. And now you can see it received a file at 1.30 p.m. And it says started, not completed. So the error is over here. And if we again right click message flow, we can read the error a little bit more easier. And it says the published message could not be routed. No subscribers were found. OK, I stopped the video for a few minutes and looked at this. Um, this is one of those weird things that happens. It's really hard to explain. Um, we were receiving a demo flat file complex. And you see here this pass-through pipeline. That should be the flat file complex pipeline. So I think maybe what happened is perhaps when we did our deploy, it, uh, it didn't reconnect the pipeline up here or something to that effect. So we're going to reset this to flat file complex. And the reason it said, the reason for our error again, let's just go over that a little bit slower. It says there was no, no public, nobody was set up to receive. No subscribers were found. So what happened is the message came in. And since the pipeline wasn't there, it basically just passed the message on through as it was. And then therefore BizTalk had no subscribers to it. So to get our orchestration to actually pick up the message, our orchestration, if you recall, is actually looking for a standard PO message. And so if the mapping and the pipeline doesn't convert the flat file to a standard PO, then this whole idea is not going to work. So we've got to make sure we have the pipeline set correctly here. The other thing we need to make sure, just to confirm again, is that our mapping is going on. So if we look at our inbound maps here, it looks like we lost that too. So right here, we should have a map 
that says map complex flat file to standard PO. Okay, so now we set that back to the way it should be, and we're going to drop our file again. Okay, I'd stop the video again to do just a little bit of research. And what normally you will see here is the orchestration started, and then you'll see an error in the orchestration. And there's a chance that maybe one of my SQL agent jobs is not running and transferring this data over to the DTA database. So what I did is I went to BizTalk Admin, and I looked at, let me just start over what I did here. We'll close these windows. I went to the Group Hub, which is right here and I look for suspended orchestrations. And this is suspended messages and suspended orchestrations. And so if we match up the times here, you can see I actually submitted one file at 134 and then I, while I was off the video, I submitted the same file again. So let's look at the one at 136.05. And so here you see 136.07, you see my orchestration name, PO Orchestrations Orc PO Demo, and you can see it's suspended. So if you double click on this, you'll see a little bit more information about it. There's three tabs at the top. We click the error information. And here it'll tell you the name of the shape that caused the error. So right here, you see it says get quid and div for divide. So if I go back to my orchestration, this is the shape, get quid and div. And so that's the shape that caused the error. Um, no one's ever interpreted for me how you exactly read this segment progress. What I really wish BizTalk would do here is I wish it would tell you like you had an error on line four, but it doesn't do that. So if you have a co if you have a lot of code here in one of your shapes, sometimes it's difficult to know which line of code actually caused the problem. Now of course here there's only one line of code that could possibly have caused the divide by zero. So here we have enter exception attempted to divide by zero, and then it gives you just a little bit more information. And so that tells us you basically what your error is and where. If you continue over here to messages, sometimes you'll see more than one. Right now you just have one, and you can actually look at the message. Uh, you can look at the general information. This is the context information. And what we've never really looked at much here is the promoted fields. So if you sort this column by type, you see all these that say not promoted. But if you scroll down, you see the ones that are promoted. And so here is the three promoted fields, the fully promoted fields that I did earlier. We have the PO date time received, PO number, and PO total amount. And you can actually see the value here. $188.93 is the value of the total amount. If you want to know what type of message this is, the field that you would use is down here. This is called message type, which we've filtered on in the past. And the message type, again, will be your type name, followed by a pound, followed by your root element name. And then if you look at the body here, you can actually see the XML message. Now usually here it's not formatted very well, so sometimes I do is I take this, and then I'll go up a notepad, and then I'll paste the message right here into notepad. And now you can see, and then sometimes if you want to, you know, you could uh, break it out and make it a little more readable, or you could actually save it to disk and then uh, open it in the browser, something like that, where it'll format it much nicer. So what we've done in this demonstration is we actually created a bug on purpose. In our orchestration, we did a divide by zero, and we saw how that message was actually caught and how we got an error. And again, what, I'm, what I meant to tell you here was that you should also see the error here in hat. But for some reason, I don't know if it's the way my machine's set up or whatever, we're not actually seeing the error here. So there's three places to look for the error. One is hat. Number two is BizTalk admin and look for suspended messages. The third place is go to the application event viewer. And sometimes you'll have to hit refresh here. And then in the source column, look for an xlang s error. And then double click it, and then you'll see basically the same error that we saw a minute ago. It says here, get GUID and divide attempt to divide by zero, et cetera, et cetera. So that concludes this demo on how to trace down your, your exceptions and bugs when you have them in your program.